What's going on y'all? Welcome to today's vlog. I'm gonna be your host fishing partner today. As you can tell by my windshield wiper situation and the uh, little raindrops here, looking like we got a little, little aquatic uh, situation going on today with the raindrops. February conditions with a little rain, not warm rain, could be tough. So I'm gonna take you along for the ride today. Sometimes you just get cabin fever though and you're like, you know what, I just gotta get out there. I gotta do this. You gotta scratch the bass itch. So that's what we're gonna go do today. Had some fishing freaks there at the boat ramp. Got a little pregame report. The shallow bite does not seem to be on, which I was hoping for. Water temp right now is 53. Seeing some bait fish out here, eight to 10. That's not bad. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to fish some shallow areas first and just see what's going on. And then if I can't get bit doing that, I'm probably gonna move out deeper and fish a little bit slower. There are some good bass in here that I know of and maybe we'll get bit. So we're gonna buckle down. We're gonna head to our first spot and get to cracking on them. Oh, we're gonna use some of the baits from the February Pro Box. A lipless crank, this is always good this time of year. And hopefully we'll have some bait up there and we'll be able to get a bite. And when a fish hits this, it's more of a reaction bite. It's just coming by really fast. Sometimes they chase it and run into it, but usually it's just, it just comes by their face and then they, they'll kind of attack it. Whereas like a, a jig bite or something like that, this time of year, you gotta fish it really slow. The fish can slowly swim over to it, they grab it. It's usually kind of a soft, subtle bite. This they just have to react to. They gotta they got make a decision really quick. They make a decision to grab it and then a lot of times you'll just see them you'll hook them on the outside of the face or you won't hook them very good because they're not f at full swim strength where they can really run over and suck the bait in quickly now once it gets over 55 you get up around 60 degrees that's when they really start to chase good and really start to eat good first little spot on the rocks wasn't working out Fish there for about about five minutes. Wasn't seeing a whole lot of bait, so I'm gonna cruise down about uh, a couple hundred yards to some more rocks. It's got deep water close by. See if there's any bait over there that's by. If I don't see any bait there, that's two main lake points that are good indicators of kind of where the fish are gonna be setting up, but we're gonna work through it together. All right, so right here we got these rocks. Main lake point. The mist and the rain is just kind of coming and going. It's like that annoying little mist that just covers your glasses and your cell phone. Usually when the overcast conditions come along, the bass kind of move up shallow. Winter and really early spring pre-spawn is kind of a different deal because the sun's gonna warm up that shallow water and the overcast conditions are not gonna warm up that shallow water. So probably keep them at bay in the deep deepness. The deep fishing slow, man, that's a, that's a grind. That's how a lot of guys catch big fish this time of year, but it is it is a grind. It's not as fun when you could just kind of chuck and wind up shallow. That's what I like to do. There's a good bass. Just got him on a brush pile. Oh yeah, that's a big one. He thumped it hard. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Woo wee. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a toad and a half. Definitely want to make sure we get this fish in the boat. Woo wee! That might be seven or eight pounds right there. Oh, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's a Mondo. Woo, son. Ike's headbanger jig just fell right out. Woo, let's get that fish in the live well. Get a picture of that one. 
Well guys, I just spent a very, very long time idling around probably 30 minutes on a shoreline that had a really steep bank where it went from like five down to 20. I was looking for brush piles. I'm trying to figure out the new Lowrance system here. This is my first time really putting it to use, trying to find brush piles and things like that. You can just see on my map here, I went up and down, up and down. This is part of the main lake. Everywhere I went that I saw just a little bit of something, I marked I marked a fish or a brush pile. There's different icons here. Just going back and forth between the side imaging. I have down imaging as well and then the regular sonar. In front of me, this thing right here, the R2-D2. Just keeping us on the spot while I'm sitting here talking to you guys. You can see the marker buoy. I marked a few. This is the first one I stopped at. And I was fishing that jig, little headbanger jig with a, I think it's a rage bug. Like I worked it through the pile, didn't get bit. And then I worked it a little bit up the ledge towards me. I'm sitting in 10, it's 14 out there. And then I just got a solid thump. And the fish just started running with it. And I'm gonna put it on the scale. Let's we'll see how big it is. I think this is gonna be the one to really christen in the silver bullet. I was looking for a fish over five pounds the other day with flare, almost got there. But uh, hey, today I'm pretty sure we're here. Oh gosh, that's a toad right there. That's a Mondo. All right, and that's gonna clock in. Bouncing 868. 868. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a certified Mondo right there. That is why you fish this time of year. You can see that's a female. She's fat. She's getting ready for the spawn. And you don't get many bites, but when you do, it's a begging, or it can be, if you put in your time. I love you, sweetie. That's a full face sniff right there. I love when you can do that. Just put like your whole, Oh yeah, got to love it. All right, we're gonna return this bad girl to the depths so she can go make some babies in the spawn. Enjoyed you. See you later. on the little sea rig. Oh. Not nearly as big. Oh man, he had it though. My gosh, I think I had him on there for a while. Didn't really realize it. I'm sorry, fish. Oh, popped right out. Never even had him hooked. He just had it in his gullet. A little guy kind of beat up looking I said you know what i'm gonna break out the little the little chicken rig that i was throwing the other day with flare because it's just a good finesse approach and i had one knock it i turned on my gopro and i don't know if he if that was the same fish that just had it the whole time or if that was a different fish but he knocked it pretty good coming through those limbs that's a much better technique for going through uh, the limbs of the tree having that 3 16 ounce weight really helps where it's not like dragging all the way through the limbs it just kind of puts it up in the limbs and you can feel it and work the uh, this is a fluke I got on here through there before I pick up my buoy and I lose where I'm at I want to make sure to mark this brush pile okay there it is right there so I'm gonna go new waypoint and you can see some of the brush, I know this is kind of hard to tell. So on here, you can see the brush. This is a brush pile. And you can see some fish kind of around it. I think I could zoom in with this sucker, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So there's the brush right there. And there's a couple of fish just kind of in and around it. But there was a Mondo there, faux show. Sure. All right, here's another example. I've got a little brush. I've got some bait fish and stuff. I just went over one, another one of my marks. Uh, looks like there's a couple of fish there. So I'm gonna turn back around. I just threw my buoy out. Threw the old crankbait out there. 
I think I discovered what might have been going on. It's not a bad sign though. All right, no luck here. I cycled through all three baits. I had one bump on the, the jig and dropped it. So time to go explore some more offshore structure. That's looking juicy right there. So we are gonna toss her out. That's what down scan looks like. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to that, really. Just to be honest with you guys. That looks like fish. There's bait in it. Um, looks like there's two fish right there. Zoom in on that situation. And uh, yeah, there's some blobs on there. Should be something down there. I got a fish, but he's in the burst pile. When I set the hook, it was just like, boop, heavy. He was directly in the brush. It's kind of tough with the Carolina rig because I don't have direct pressure on the fish. Well, I no longer feel the head shakes. It's a good indicator that fish has got off or it's just hung in there too deep. Ugh, broke it. That's part of brush pile fishing. That's enough for today, R2. You've done well. Well, it's good to be home. OSG. Hey, honey. How we doing? Oh, welcome back to the empty nest. The empty nest is yeah. pretty much what it is. I feel like I can echo in here. See, so you got your vlog camera out over here. Do a little vlog A. I do. she left up last year? Oh, it's it's. She's a beaut, babe. She's a real beaut. She's got her own little minty thing. That's right. Minty crash. Take a look at mine. I'm boom. Check that out. Yours like the macho man. The big fuzz. Well, the fishing freaks just wanted to say hi. I uh, gotta go talk to them about some lures, so I'll uh, see you here in just a minute. Have fun. So you go. Here we are in the lure cave. I kind of wanted to get a couple of more videos in the cave before it's moved. You know, OSG just mentioned our house is empty. That's because we're moving and we have it showing. Literally, the reason I went fishing today, we had a showing on our house and I couldn't be here. I literally had to leave. I was like, well, I got this boat in the trailer here. Um, we're kind of semi living here, but not really because our, our house is a show home now. So I guess I'm just going to go fishing. It worked out in my, my favor because we got a Mondo, baby. Now you don't get Mondos every day. I love to catch those fat girls. The fat girls come around this time of year, basically through uh, April. And then when we get into post spawn bass start getting really skinny. So this is really the time of year. If you're gonna go try to catch big bass, you know, basically now through March, April, you're gonna get those Mondos every once in a while. But in January, February, ee, you're only gonna get a few bites. So you better hang in there. If you start seeing that bait up shallow, that's when you start getting a lot more bites on like the chatter baits and the spinner baits and all that fun stuff that I really like to throw too. But when the bait fish are still out, that means a lot of times the bass are going to be out too and it's going to be a slow bite. And a lot of people throw jigging spoons. You can throw uh, jerk baits if the bass or if you got clear water and the bass can come up and down. But today I had dirty water and I had to go slow. And that's where that jig really comes into play. Jig is my favorite bait to throw for big bass. And literally it was the exact same jig I hadn't even retied from the other day with Flair, what I, what I caught my biggest bass on there uh, when we were fishing some pre-spawn conditions. So the jig just seems to get it done. And I had that rigged up on 18 pound fluorocarbon line on a high speed gear ratio reel with a seven foot favorite big sexy. Let me tell you guys, I am so excited that my 7.2 Signature Series Big Sexy Fishing Freak Rod is almost here, y'all. Pay attention to the socials. I'm going to let you know when it comes out. But I really wanted to fish that rod today. I mean, that, that extra two inches fishing brush piles, you know, just having a little extra leverage, I really like that. I like a seven foot more for like just straight flipping like up really shallow. Seven two is like my favorite overall though. That's why we made the rod. It's freaking awesome. Can't wait to show you. But anyways, I'll let you know when it's out. And a big shout out to everybody that's been hitting me up with the Make Every Cast Count uh, gear. Um, tagging me on Instagram and stuff like that. I haven't officially started the... Uh, uh, the contest yet uh, to come fish with me, but uh, I know you guys have been getting the Make Every Cast Count gear. I want to just want to thank you guys uh, for all the support with all the gear at the uh, the Fishing Freak store. I guess we can call it. Thank you guys for everything uh, for helping support this channel, especially during these hard months of January, um, February. It's it's really 
Really tough on us YouTubers, so I appreciate the merch buys. Check it out if you haven't already. Go get you some gear. And subscribe right here to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the ding dongs for notifications when I put out the video so you can get them right in your face as soon as they hit the internet. And as always, thank you for tuning in on this video, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.